In this video, I'm going to be talking about my top 50 games of all time, starting from 50 to 41. And I know what you're thinking, everyone is doing this, but I haven't done it yet, and I thought it'd be a fun series to end the year with, so let's just jump right into it. Now, before we begin, I just want to let you guys know how I rated these games and why they're at my top 50. I went with games that I play all the time, and I ranked them based off how many times I played them versus how much I enjoy that game. And I also want to let you guys know that I don't actually own all 50 of these games, despite what some people think in my comment section. I guess if I don't own a game, I can't have an opinion on it. Not too sure what that is about, but I honestly just like to play games. I don't actually go out and buy games, mainly because I have kids I want to send to college one day, and I love board games, but they're not my entire life. But now that has been addressed, let's start off this list at number 50 with a bang. Literally, bang the card game. I also really enjoy Bang the Dice Game. Both these games are survival hidden role games where each player will be given a role and depending on the role they will have to complete a different objective. Now depending on how many players there are there's going to be a sheriff, some deputies, some outlaws and renegades. Now each player has a different objective. If you're the sheriff you want to make sure you defeat the outlaws. If you're the renegade you want to be the last one standing so you want to make sure that the outlaws do not kill the sheriff. Speaking of which if you're playing as an outlaw then the outlaws are trying to defeat the sheriff. And if you're playing as a deputy, you're trying to make sure the sheriff doesn't die. Now the difference between the dice game and the card game are mainly that the dice game plays a lot faster than the card game. And I find with the card game, it is really based off the luck of the draw, based on what you draw. You could get a really bad draw and you're not able to shoot your opponents that are far away. Or you could draw a bunch of dynamite and not be able to play anything because you don't want it to blow up on you. Versus the dice game, you're able to reroll those dice and try to get a better outcome. But regardless, I think Bang is an excellent game, especially if you like hit and roll games. And this one just happens to have a western theme, so if you're into that too, there you go. Check out Bang. Coming in at number 49, we have Mage Knight. Now I have some really good memories with this one because I used to play it all the time before I had kids. But Mage Knight is a mix of RPG and deck building where you have to explore and conquer lands and complete quests. Build your army and fill your deck with powerful cards. In order to win at this game, you will need to be good at hand management and planning. If you can conquer the lands and defeat your enemies, then your victory will be guaranteed. This was a game that really got me more into deck building. I played deck building games before this and I really enjoyed them. So my friends showed me this one and I absolutely loved it. Really good memories with this one and that is why it's sitting at number 49. 48, Dungeon Alliance. Now I will admit that this does have a generic fantasy theme, but again, I really enjoy this one. I have a lot of fun playing it, and that is why it's sitting at number 48. It has a bunch of different game modes. You can play this competitively, cooperatively. This is definitely a game that I like to play solo. I don't mind playing with more players, but I do prefer to play the solo because otherwise I find the game can drag on too long. If you play with more players, they can get bored. So this is the type of game that I would rather play solo, which is why it's in my top 10 solo games, which you can check out in the description box down below if you want to check out that video. But in Dungeon Alliance, everyone's going to be playing as four heroes, and each hero has their own unique abilities and starting cards, so you can come up with some really unique combos. You're going to be judging through this dungeon, defeating enemies, gaining victory points, and ultimately build the strongest alliance. If you haven't given a shot, check this one out. And with that being said, let's go to number 47. All right, with number 47, I went with a game completely opposite from building a deck and dungeon crawling. Actually, in this game, you're not even supposed to talk at all. That's right, I'm talking about The Mind. A game you must win without talking and working with your fellow players. Read your teammates' mind and try to extend cards in extending order to complete the level. I always find this one a really good hit at game night. It's also a really great game if you have kids and you want to have a quiet evening because they can't talk in this game, which is why I really love it. But again, it's easy to play, easy to teach, and there's always somebody at the table that messes up, which adds to the fun, I find. Now my next one is actually a super popular game. I'll be surprised if you haven't heard of it, but it is a perfect Halloween game, and that is Betrayal House on the Hill. If you haven't heard of Betrayal House on the Hill, essentially this is a dungeon crawl game where you're going to be searching through a haunted mansion, exploring different rooms, 
uncovering different symbols, trying not to let your stats go down, and eventually a haunt is revealed. All players must work together to defeat that haunt, and the haunt can be essentially a bunch of different things. It could be a ghost, a demon, something supernatural, and there's a bunch of different versions of this one. I highly recommend the second edition because the rules are a lot more cleaner, and there's also a legacy version if you like games that change the more you play it. That is one I would recommend for you. Whatever the case is, Betrayal House on the Hill is definitely a great horror game. Let me know if you guys played it and what you think of it in the comment section down below. And with that being said, let's move on to the next game. Coming in at number 45, I have Shadows in the Forest, a silly one versus many hidden movement game where you play with the lights out. You are trying to hide behind trees and not letting the player who controls the light hit you. I love the little figurines in this game that are little shadowlings. Uh, and it, the light is really cool because it's just a little lantern. If you have a family or you know of some younger kids to play a good game that you don't mind playing in the dark, then this is definitely something I could recommend. With that being said, let's go to the next game. At number 44, I have a game that I play all the time around the holiday season with my family that are not really non-gamers, and that is Ticket to Ride Europe. I find this is the best Ticket to Ride version for more than two players. Why is this the best Ticket to Ride version? Is because this one has train stations and it introduced tunnels. The train stations allow players to complete the routes, so I find point scoring is a lot closer at the end of the game, and there's always a fight for a tunnel to complete a route. It definitely makes the game a little bit more competitive with those routes, and point scoring is a lot more closer, again, because more people can complete their routes if they use the train stations. If not, they can always keep the points at the train stations that they don't spend, and the more you have, the more points you get. Let me know what your favorite Ticket to Ride version is in the comment section down below. I'm always looking for a new Ticket to Ride version to play. And with that being said, let's go right into the next game. 43, Dead of Winter. Try to survive during a winter zombie apocalypse. And if that wasn't hard enough, someone is trying to sabotage your survival in order to win the game. This is a really good cooperative game where all players must work together in order to survive because you can't complete all the tasks yourself. Someone's going to have to go into town. Someone's going to have to make decisions. Someone's going to make sure the trash is okay. Hopefully that's not the saboteur, the traitor. But this is one of my favorite zombie survival games. There's a lot going on and you can always play as different characters if you die. Each of them having a very unique ability that you can use in the game. But yeah, that is Dead of Winter sitting at number 43 on my list. Now coming in at number 42, I have Dinosaur World. Honestly, I really enjoyed this when I first picked this game up. I thought it was super thematic. I love the theme about building my own dinosaur park, all those different tiles that you can add, casinos, roller coasters, and you get to mix different DNAs to make different dinosaurs. Unfortunately, the more I played this, I found it the less fun that it got because there's just not enough time in the game to make a lot of dinosaurs, and that's where I feel this game loses it for me, uh, especially when it comes to making those dangerous dinosaurs because at the end of the round, you have a Jeep that takes visitors around the park, and if you have those dangerous dinosaurs, the more chances that your visitors are going to get killed and that means less points for you at the end of the game. I mean, to kind of balance that out more, the dinosaurs are worth more points because of how dangerous they are. But again, I find that if you have too many, you're just going to lose the game. I still do enjoy it and I'll still play it because I still love the theme, but I'm not too sure if this is going to be in my top 50 next year. Now coming in at number 41 at the end of this list for this video is Viticulture. This is my favorite couple game. I find this is a really great game if you have a partner and you want to invite another couple over. You can crack open a bottle of wine and have a great time playing this game because this game is all about making wine. In Viticulture, you'll need to make wine and expand your vineyard by planting different wine cards and harvesting them for later in the year. You earn money and in time this will help you gain victory points. Use your workers in the summer and winter to complete tasks to get you ready for the following year. Nothing sounds better to me than cracking open a bottle of wine and playing a board game to end the evening. And that's what this game delivers on. It's honestly one of my favorite Stonemaier games next to Wingspan, but I'll talk about that game in a future video because it is on this list. But if you guys want to learn more about my top 10 list, then check out this video right here and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.